Graphic Audio presents an audio guide to the Survivalist series by the critically acclaimed author Jerry Ahern, presented in rich, vivid graphic audio, a movie in your mind. The Survivalist series is an intense, action-oriented, post-apocalyptic series that centers around the main hero, John Rourke. More so than some other post-apocalyptic series, The Survivalist plays up the importance of family and family values. In the wasteland of a sundered America, one man will struggle against all odds to find and reunite his family, the most important thing on Earth. The plot. While conducting survivalist training in Pakistan, John Wark witnesses the Red Army invasion across the Khyber Pass from Afghanistan into Pakistan. Sensing the civil unrest and realizing the possible dramatic consequences, John Wark boards a flight back to his home near Atlanta, Georgia. While Wark is aboard the flight, the Soviet leaders launch a nuclear strike against the United States. and the American president retaliates. Nuclear missiles blossom in the sky above both countries, killing nearly 200 million Americans and over 100 million Soviets. As a result of the blast, the pilots flying Rourke's plane are blinded by the neutron flash. Rourke manages to take control of the airplane and crash land it just outside of Albuquerque, New Mexico. In the aftermath of the crash, Rourke teams up with his newfound friend and partner, Paul Rubenstein, as they make their way to the foothills of Georgia to find Rourke's family, which he senses are somehow still alive. As Rourke and Rubenstein quest through the fallout and do battle with the degenerating elements of society, the Soviets invade America, sending their airborne forces to land on American soil and take over the major cities of interest and political power. With the Soviets in control of what was once America, Rourke is forced to team up with the surviving members of the presidential cabinet in one last bid to try and fight the forces of the Red Army. In his battle against the Soviet forces, Rourke learns of another impending crisis that threatens to destroy all life on Earth. Due to increased levels of radiation resulting from the fallout of the night of the war, the Earth's atmosphere is about to burn away, causing the sun's rays to burn away all remaining life on Earth. As Rourke and Rubenstein continue their quest across the remnants of the United States, Rourke learns of a mysterious project, known only as Eden, that was put into effect moments before the night of the war by the then President of the United States. As Rourke gathers more information from what sources he can, he learns that the Eden Project was created as a way to repopulate the Earth in the event of total destruction, such as was imminent. The project involved sending five fully populated space shuttles into space, and through the process of cryogenic sleep, having them return 500 years in the future. The thinking being that the Earth's atmosphere would then have time to heal. As work continues to battle with the Soviets, striking blow after blow and winning victory after victory, he is finally reunited with his family in the foothills of Tennessee. He then takes them to his survival retreat that he had built prior to the night of the war in the mountains of Georgia. Rourke then invades the top-secret Soviet facility known as the Womb, in what used to be the United States NORAD. He prevents the KGB from destroying the Eden Project shuttles on their return to Earth. In the process, he manages to steal Soviet cryogenic equipment, allowing Rourke and his friends and family to go into cryogenic sleep and await the return of the Eden Project astronauts 500 years in the future. As Rourke and his family sleep in cryostasis, tucked away in the safety of his retreat, the Earth's atmosphere burns away and all life on Earth is destroyed. 
hundreds of years into the cryogenic sleep, Rourke awakens himself and his son and daughter. He pauses the cryogenic sleep so that he can raise his children into their early 30s, thinking that they will better be able to defend themselves as they attempt to repopulate the Earth in the future. The Rourkes then go back into cryogenic sleep and awaken 500 years in the future when the Eden Project shuttles return. Rourke and his friends and family quickly unite with the astronauts from the Eden Project and learn that not only did the Soviet threat survive through the science of cryogenics, but there is also a strong Nazi presence in what used to be South America. Realizing that his old enemies are still alive and plotting to once again overthrow the freedom-loving people of the world, John Rourke takes up arms and does battle with the enemy in all corners of the world. As Rourke battles against the Nazis once again, a new enemy arises. Dr. Dietrich Zimmer. Zimmer and Rourke fight a brutal game of cat and mouse, which culminates in a climactic confrontation between the two powerhouses. In the aftermath of their battle, Sarah Rourke, John's wife, is shot in the head, and Rourke's unborn child is stolen from her womb by the maniacal Dr. Zimmer. Rourke is gravely injured as well, and in an attempt to save both of their lives, the couple is put back into cryogenic stasis for another 125 years. Not wanting to be parted, Rourke's family and friends take the long sleep as well. Flash forward 125 years into the future, and the Rourke family awakens to find that Rourke, gravely injured when he was put into stasis, has fully healed and is ready for action. His wife, Sarah, however, is still grasping at life. Zimmer's bullet still lies lodged deep within her brain. Rourke soon realizes that though medical science has come far in the time that he has been in stasis, the only man that has the expertise to remove the bullet is the very man that put it there in the first place, Dr. Zimmer. As Rourke once again does battle with the evil forces of Nazism, he learns that the unborn son that was stolen the night Sarah was shot has been raised by Zimmer himself and groomed to become the leader of the new Nazi stronghold named Eden in what was once the continental United States. As Rourke battles Zimmer, he realizes that his ambition and evil knows no bounds. Zimmer obtains the scientific genius to clone human beings and, through a brilliant process, learns how to make copies of the human brain. Through this scientific breakthrough, Zimmer and his stolen son make themselves immortal gods. But Rourke will stop at nothing to put an end to the plague of Nazism that threatens to destroy all life on Earth yet again. His battles against the scourge of mankind lead up to one final confrontation between himself, the son that should have been his own, and the omnipotent Dr. Dietrich Zimmer. The Characters John Rourke Doctor, survival and weapons expert, and ex-CIA paramilitary operations officer. He has keen sight but is consequently sensitive to bright light and is usually wearing sunglasses even at night. He is always armed with a pair of Detonics Combat Master 45 pistols in an Alessi shoulder holster, Colt Python and Colt Lawman revolvers, an AG Russell Sting 1A knife, and a shoulder sling with either a CAR-15 assault rifle or a Steyr Mannlicher SSG sniper rifle. He has a remarkable sense of duty and personal valor. Rourke knows the evil inside man and will do anything to stop it from destroying the good. Sarah Rourke, John's wife and mother of his children. She is of a much more liberal mindset than John. She despises the use of violence and guns until the night of the war, where she is forced to do all within her power to protect her children. Though Sarah realizes that there is sometimes a need for violence, she still maintains her liberal mindset, something which eventually causes a rift between her and her husband. Michael Rourke. 
John and Sarah Rourke's son, a spitting image of his father, so much so that they can easily be mistaken for one another. He too carries his father's undeniable sense of right and wrong and bears the heavy burden of honor upon his strong shoulders. Annie Rourke, John and Sarah Rourke's daughter. Annie is a strong-minded woman that treasures her father's conservative values and ideas. She realizes the need for violence and is never found without a weapon of some kind. Through the process of cryogenics, Annie develops a mysterious mental power that allows her to connect with her family and sense when they are in danger. This power makes her a vital part of many of Rourke's battle plans. Paul Rubenstein, John Rourke's sidekick and fellow survivor of the Albuquerque airliner crash on the night of the war. He starts out as a naive young man that just wants to return to his parents. But as he battles beside the unconquerable John Rourke, Paul quickly learns the arts of war and becomes a formidable, battle-hardened soldier. Major Natalia Tiemarovna, Adopted surreptitiously as a niece by General Varakov after her real parents are killed by the KGB, Natalia trains as a KGB agent reaching the rank of major by the beginning of the war. Once married to the unpredictable and often exceedingly ruthless Vladimir Karamazov, the head of the KGB in America, she eventually leaves him after being beaten and otherwise mistreated. She soon develops a very close relationship with Rourke. After the death of her husband, she battles against the Russian and Nazis and is never far from Rourke's side. General Ishmael Verakov, Natalia's uncle and leader of the Soviet occupation forces in America. Varakov is a patriotic, honorable, and respectable Soviet soldier. And even though they often find themselves on opposing sides of the battle, Rourke and he have a begrudging respect for one another. There are even times when Varakov helps Rourke to stop some of the more extreme plans of the KGB. Vladimir Karamazov. Husband of Natalia Tiemarovna and head of the North American branch of the KGB, Karamazov has an incredibly sadistic and dark personality. In many ways, he becomes one of the series' main villains as he quests to destroy John Rourke and his one-time wife Natalia Tiemarovna. Having no sense of honor, Karamazov quickly proves to be a terrible adversary. Martin Zimmer Son of John Rourke and Sarah Rourke, Martin was stolen from Sarah's womb by the evil Dr. Dietrich Zimmer. While his parents slept in cryostasis, Zimmer warped and twisted young Martin's mind into accepting the tenets of Nazism. Now, fully indoctrinated into the culture and mindset, Martin leads the new Nazi regime in an attempt to once again overthrow the balance of good and evil and achieve total world domination. Dr. Dietrich Zimmer. Rourke's darkest and most maniacal foe, Dietrich Zimmer is a brilliant surgeon and medical technician. In addition to his strides as a medical powerhouse, Zimmer is also the de facto leader of the new Nazi regime, which has taken over what was once the continental United States. Brilliant and cunning, Zimmer has a complete and total lack of any sense of morals. But though Zimmer preaches Nazism, he wants far more than a new Nazi regime. He wants nothing less than to become a god among mortals. The Novels The Survivalist is an epic saga which is told over the course of 27 novels with two bridging books built into the story. The sheer size and scope of the stories is breathtaking, with the series beginning in present times and ending roughly 650 years in the future. It combines political elements, action, science fiction, and even fantasy into one cohesive story about a man who will stop at nothing to protect his family. The Survivalist Number One, Total War. For years, like millions of other Americans, John Thomas Rourke had planned for what seemed inevitable the destruction of civilization. There were various possible causes. Global economic collapse, some uncontrollable pestilence, 
a world famine, or nuclear war. And the rumbling signaling the coming of total war was becoming increasingly strong as Rourke, ex-CIA covert operations officer, weapons expert, and survival authority made his last desperate gambit to save his estranged wife and two children before the button was pressed, the missile launched, the multi-megaton bombs loosed. Here then is the story of the ultimate war, the final nuclear holocaust, and the unrelenting quest of John Thomas Rourke as he begins his search across war-ravaged America, following every haunting clue, however fragmentary, to locate his missing family. There are Soviet occupation troops, lawless murderous brigands, and vast uncharted nuclear deserts to block his way. But John Thomas Rourke has no option but to go on. He is the survivalist. Number two, the nightmare begins. World War III is now a bloody page in American history, with nuclear holocaust killing more than a quarter billion people worldwide and the United States just as a memory, John Thomas Rourke is enduring the ultimate test. Soviet occupation forces have landed and must begin the pacification of America. They will start by liquidating any prominent Americans who could become a rallying point for armed resistance. The first name on the list is Samuel Chambers, the lone surviving member of the presidential cabinet. And as the American KGB invades Texas to find Chambers, they find Rourke there as well. With his young friend Paul Rubenstein, Rourke is fighting his way back to continue the search for his missing wife and children. Paramilitary armies, heavily armed brigands, a beautiful KGB infiltrator, an unending stream of war refugees, and a land gone mad with violence block his path. The birth of the second United States has begun, and the quest continues for John Thomas Rourke. Number three, the quest. John Thomas Rourke, weapons specialist and survival expert, has at last reached his home only to find that his wife and two children have fled for their lives. With the knowledge that his family has survived the nuclear holocaust, Rourke, with the aid of young Paul Rubenstein, must find his loved ones. But the Soviets are consolidating their military hold on the country, and both the ruthless KGB and the fledgling post-war U.S. government have begun their own search. First, they must learn the purpose behind the massive launch of secret U.S. rockets on the night the war began. Then they have to determine the meaning of the mysterious Eden Project and find the one surviving NASA official who can answer all the questions. A deadly game of intrigue within the Soviet High Command, the formation of the American resistance, and a highly placed traitor in the new U.S. government all block Rourke's path. Number 4. The Doomsayer John Rourke is pursuing the trail of his wife and children, from whom he was separated when World War III began. As he sets out from his retreat, he meets a beautiful woman scientist, who has learned that the nuclear bombing on the night of the war has created an artificial fault line. Within days, perhaps hours, it will cause one of the most massive quakes in history separating the Florida Peninsula from the United States mainland. Rourke must postpone the search for his family in order to reach Army intelligence and begin the evacuation of Florida. He must also find young Paul Rubenstein, who has gone there to learn if by some miracle his parents had survived the war. Communist Cuban troops, Soviet-Cuban rivalry, a traitor in the inner circle of the second United States, and a natural disaster of blood-chilling magnitude block Rourke's way. But he must go on. He is the survivalist. Number 5. The Web John Rourke has accomplished one of his goals. He's helped his young friend Paul Rubenstein locate his parents. Now Rourke's search for his family must continue, hampered by severe storms raging along the eastern seaboard, caused by the earthquakes which destroyed Florida. Rourke picks up his relentless quest, 
avoiding the Russian troops searching for the missing data on the enigmatic Eden project, and rides into the most bizarre situation he's discovered since the night of the war. Life in the Tennessee mountain village is all too normal, seemingly unaffected by the war. It is there that John Thomas Rourke finds himself in the middle of a mass suicide pact, and is expected to participate. While the battles rage and blizzards roar, Rourke fights to escape. He must go on. He is the survivalist. Number 6. The Savage Horde John Rourke is on the move again, searching for a cache of 80 megaton warhead missiles secreted on the new west coast. It all begins with a firefight between brigands and a unit of the 2nd United States Armed Forces, a battle that ends with Rourke and a seriously wounded Natalia taking refuge on a submarine. The sight of the sunken remains of San Francisco is a grisly reminder of the night of the war. The horde of half-dressed savages waiting on the shore, a deadly example of the madness of this brutal post-Holocaust world. Surrounded now by murderous madmen and threatened by a mysterious officer who has been traveling with him, Rourke must call on all his training to escape and continue the search for his family. Number 7. The Prophet World War III was just practice for what's coming. And even those who survived the original firestorm, like John Rourke, won't have a chance when the next round of carnage begins. But Rourke didn't struggle to stay alive in this brutal world, only to die in a final holocaust of fire and blood. As six nuclear missiles are poised to start the ultimate conflagration, Rourke's constant quest for his wife and children becomes a desperate mission to save both his family and all humanity from being blasted into extinction. Number 8. The End Is Coming Inevitable death now awaits every soul who lived through the Holocaust, as the Earth's atmosphere is about to explode into a searching blaze of fire. But one man refuses to die, refuses to accept the horror, John Thomas Rourke. Rourke, desperate to find and save his family, must first smash through Russian patrols and then cut to the heart of the KGB plot that could spawn a lasting legacy of evil. And when the sky bursts into flames, consuming every living being on the planet, it will be the ultimate test for the survivalist. Number 9. Earth Fire. The Russians, consolidating their brutal hold on America after the bloody horror of World War III, are planning an act so vicious that mankind itself may never recover from the blow. John Rourke is the only one with a prayer of stopping them. But the Reds aren't afraid of Rourke. They fear the same thing he does, the imminent combustion of the Earth's atmosphere into a global mass of deadly flame. The Rourke has finally found his family. It will be a short reunion if he can't find a way to survive the Earth fire. When all of humanity is about to burn in a hell of its own creation, it will be the final and perhaps fatal test of Rourke's skills. Number 10. The Awakening John Rourke knows that there are six people left on Earth, his loved ones. After five centuries of sleep, they awake to discover a world unlike the one they knew, and they are not alone. New and old enemies live to kill and kill to live. It could be the ultimate test of Rourke's skills as the survivalist. Number 11. Reprisal World War III and its aftermath of all-consuming fire left civilization on the brink of extinction. But John Thomas Rourke still lives, fighting the elements and the odds. And those odds have never been more heavily stacked against Rourke than when he finds his son mortally wounded and Natalia and all of his family kidnapped by a Russian foe, long thought dead. As Rourke's son hovers between life and death under the watchful eyes of Paul Rubinstein, Rourke loads his weapons and sets out across a desolate America. His destination? The womb, a secret Soviet base in Colorado, where he must battle an enemy who brutally torches his helpless captives before killing them. Rourke cannot afford to fail. 
Number 12, The Rebellion. Hands bleeding, joints aching, John Wark watches the remaining space shuttles of the Eden Project fleet land. But what kind of world have they returned to? A Soviet madman bent on world domination, a Nazi resurrection, and one of the Eden crew murdered within the first day of the fleet's return. John Rourke, the survivalist, must serve as judge, jury, and executioner in the pursuit of justice and the defense of freedom. Number 13, Pursuit. When John Rourke's daughter is kidnapped by a Russian agent, Wark follows their trail across a frozen Arctic wasteland and stumbles upon a small pocket of humanity living in a tropical paradise surrounded by ice and snow. The community of Icelandic descendants has flourished in seclusion during the long years following the fiery Holocaust, unaware of the fierce and bloody struggle in the outside world between the forces of freedom and a communist tyranny. And as the Russian strike force readies to assault the tranquil enclave, Wark must quickly teach these people of peace the harsh realities of war, the techniques of killing to survive for freedom's sake, and the hard-earned skills of surviving. Number 14. The Terror Vladimir Karamazov is a man possessed who demands the world from God. In this world growing more crowded and perilous by the day, John Rourke must use every means at his command to stop the despotic dreams of the hero marshal and his doomsday weapon, a weapon unleashing the evil, the beast lurking in the heart of every man to serve the lusts of Vladimir Karamazov. Number 15, Overlord. It's a perilous world after the fiery apocalypse of World War III and John Rourke pursues his archenemy Vladimir Karamazov into the strife-torn, blackened wilderness of mainland China and a rendezvous with certain death. Karamazov, bent on the destruction of the entire world, is determined to seize control of the vast communist Chinese nuclear arsenal that survived the hellfire destruction of the night of the war. Midwake, part one of two five centuries after nuclear war laid waste to the land. The future of humankind may rest with the fishes. John Rourke, Natalia Anastasia Tiemarovna, and a band of marines battle tyranny beneath the sea to defend liberty and justice under the stars. Midwake, part two of two. On a planet where not all is what it seems, Earth's largest space station is home to America's Navy, a society born of science strives to find its place in war, and 500-year-old history comes to blazing life. John, Michael, and Annie Rourke, Paul Rubinstein, and Natalia Tiamarovna battle ancient foes even as they long for a world without war. Number 16. The Arsenal. Marshal Vladimir Karamazov is dead, the victim of the fierce undersea battle for Midwake. But with his archenemy gone, John Rourke discovers a terrifying new threat looming on the eastern horizon. On an expedition to secure peaceful relations with the Far East, Rourke's son Michael and his ambassadors are imprisoned by the mysterious leader of the second city of China, a sadistic madman intent on unleashing another nuclear holocaust on an already war-ravaged world. With Russian Colonel Antonovich, Karamazov surviving second-in-command, preparing to mount his own assault on the second city to gain control of the remainder of China's pre-war atomic arsenal, John Rourke finds himself trapped between two seemingly invincible enemies. And with precious time running out, he is the only man who can rescue his captured son and save what is left of civilization from total destruction. Number 17, The Ordeal. Humanity nearly killed itself once. Can John Rourke stop it from succeeding in a second try? If the Chinese worshippers of the Sun God have their way, the world will be cleansed in fire of a second nuclear holocaust. For every being on the planet, there is no escape. Number 18. The Struggle. In an effort to rule 21st century Earth, 
Vladimir Karamazov and his followers used the nuclear option, nearly destroying Earth. Five centuries later, Karamazov's successors battle to use the same weapons and newer ultimate weapons in pursuit of 25th century world peace. From Pacific Islands to the frozen foothills of the Himalayas, John Rourke and his allies fight delusion and raw ambition to save the fragile planet from men and women bent on proving the American philosopher George Santayana right. Those who cannot remember the past are doomed to repeat it. Number 19, Final Rains. Terrifying new storm clouds loom over the eastern horizon as John Rourke takes command of his battered nation's broadening air and land war against the brutal Soviet foe. Russian troops, utilizing a blood-curdling new particle beam technology, have launched a furious assault on the Eden Project. Joining forces with his international allies, including the army of the underwater citadel Midwake, Rourke races to the defense of the beleaguered settlement. The entire world is dividing to do battle a fourth time. But this time, the Earth's atmospheric envelope is so fragile that a single nuclear bomb blast will assure the total annihilation of mankind. And unless John Thomas Rourke can stem the raging communist death tide before the ultimate button is pushed, no power on the planet will be able to forestall humanity's extinction. Not even the survivalist. Number 20, Firestorm. In a world where evil will not die, Nazis dream of world domination. Soviet land forces count on their reborn particle beam weapons to gain the advantage. While their undersea brethren weigh the nuclear option, an option that will leave the planet desolate as a rock in space. Albert Einstein once observed, only two things are infinite, the universe and human stupidity, and I'm not sure about the former. John Rourke and the forces of freedom couldn't agree more. Number 21, to end all war. Without technology, survival is hopeless. Then intelligence data confirms rumors of an alliance being forged between the warring Soviet factions. Almost as a warning, New Germany is ravaged by a hellish bombing raid of unprecedented magnitude. John Thomas Rourke and the free world have no choice. A dual strike simultaneously against the Soviet undersea forces and the Soviet underground city must be launched. The Allies' battle plan is desperate, hinging on the success of the untested particle beam and the equally deadly instincts of the survivalists. The Legend, Part 1 of 2 The fiery destruction of nuclear war and its deadly aftermath have driven the free world to its knees. Enslaved by the victorious Soviet invaders, John Rourke leads the forces of freedom in the bloody fight against oppression to save an all but devastated future Earth. In a world marching to its final battle, John Rourke leads the forces of good into the maw of evil. If good prevails, can John Rourke survive the peace? The Legend, Part 2 of 2 In the post-war world, John Rourke lives as a god in the minds of Eden's population. Their leaders debase the principles of freedom and individual rights Rourke fought for. And the Rourke family learns its numbers have grown in a shocking way. Number 22, Brutal Conquest. Civil icon John Rourke must come to terms with his new status as god among men. He is the ever-reluctant hero of legend, and now must battle a completely new retinue of villains in the futuristic new world. Along with the rest of the Rourke family, he will fight to gain supremacy over the one man who has the ability to save Sarah Rourke's life. Number 23, Call to Battle. In a post-nuclear America, John Rourke learns of a secret attack by neo-fascist commandos that could cripple the new free world. With the fate of Hawaii in the balance, he marshals his SEAL and TAC teams for a counter-strike. But when the evil of Nazism fights its way back from the brink of destruction, 
John Rourke will find himself pushed to the very edge and beyond. Number 24, Blood Assassins. John Thomas Rourke's darkest nightmare may be true. He has learned of the death of his wife, Sarah Rourke, at the hands of his most hated enemy, Dietrich Zimmer. Driven by the desire to see the man whom he hates most brought to final justice, nothing will stand in Rourke's way. That is, until a totally new plot unravels and further complicates the game between him and his brilliant and completely insane rival. Number 25, War Mountain. John Rourke has learned that his wife is alive and now he must risk everything to save her. But the diabolical Dietrich Zimmer remains one step ahead of him always. This time, however, Rourke will throw aside his ideals of fair fight and launch an attack that will make his worshippers question his role as God among men. With his family on the line, Rourke will embrace a darkness from which he may never return. Number 26, Countdown. The final countdown has begun for John Rourke and the fate of the world hangs in the balance. As all the pieces for the end game are put into place, Rourke and his hated enemy Dietrich Zimmer will do battle on an epic scale. But just as John Rourke finally manages to back his rival into a corner, an attack from an unforeseen enemy may cost him his very life. Number 27, Death Watch. John Rourke has battled for over 600 years, fighting the enemy of humanity in its many forms. But this, his final battle, will test the very makings of his soul. His enemy, Dietrich Zimmer, has conquered the very workings of life itself, capturing the prize of immortality. Now, he threatens to unleash his final doomsday plot, which will mean the end of all humanity. With the end of all he loves looming over his head, John Wark will play out the final battle with all life on Earth, hoping for his success. Don't miss the thrilling experience of Jerry A. Hearn's The Survivalist series. All available at www.graphicaudio.net. <laughs>